Hey everyone, it's Müller here with a short guide on how to build the most effective teams with the highest damage output for endgame content, namely Abyss floors 9 to 12 and also the high level dungeons. Even if you're right now just at the point where you can't beat those floors, eventually you should care about those floors especially because those four floors get reset every 14 days so you can do them over and over again and get a lot of free primo gems which you could use for pulling for new 5 star characters. Especially with the new gacha system that got announced recently, it's very interesting even for free to play players. For the people who are new or haven't progressed until Abyss Floor 5 yet, from Abyss Floor 5 onward you always need to have two teams. So basically if I wanna go and try Abyss Floor 10. I have first half and second half and the game asks me to provide two different teams. So let's start by talking a little bit about how I structure my teams and then we go into the specifics how I gear individual characters and how I use them in certain rotations. And the way I use this kind of build it also works great for any boss fight in every domain. I will always have a main damage dealer and a support damage dealer. And you need to be very clear who is who. So let's start as an example. My main damage dealer is Dialog. And the support damage dealer for Dialog will, in my case, always be Fischl. They are just built to work together really well. And then I have another damage dealer, main damage dealer. This one is Beidou and her supporter is Xiangling. So you see, I have the main damage dealer, which is one element, and then I have the support character who's just there to apply the elemental stack, so I get the elemental combo, in my case, overload. So those are already basically my teams that I go with, and now I have basically four spots left. So I want to, of course, also have some heal, so I pick Shichi as a healer for first team and Barbara for the second team. So you can already see Barbara level 60, doesn't really matter, the heal is still there and she basically has almost zero screen time. If you really wonder who should I upgrade first, it should always be your main damage dealer if you go like that, right? Always upgrade your main damage dealer first and then you go and upgrade the support damage dealers. Now we have the fourth spot left. For most of the floors actually I didn't even fill the spot. Sometimes I pick Venti. If there is a large number of enemies, I just pick Venti for the AoE pull, his ultimate skill. You could of course also fill up the last spot with another character for elemental resonance advantage. But the main point to take from here, how I structure my teams is main damage dealer, support damage dealer, and then probably some heal. So let's talk a little bit more about the individual characters. So my strongest team basically, like I said, is Delok and Fischl. Beidou and Shangling is also okay, but Delok and Fischl definitely a little bit stronger. But this is mainly due to the fact that Delok is a 5 star, and 5 star have higher base stats and also higher attack modifiers. If we have a look, for example, at Beidou, her talents, so this one is her left mouse button, right, or left mouse button attack, so she deals on level 5, so this is talent level 5, 96, 96, 120, 118, and the fifth hit deals 153. Dialog only has it on level 4, so he's one level below it, however he deals 115, 112, 126, 171. So if you're having a 5 star character and have another character and you're unsure who should be the main DPS and who should be the support DPS, it's probably a better choice to pick the 5 star character as the main damage dealer just because they have higher base stats, higher um, skill modifiers and so on and so forth. I wouldn't call this pay to win however as I was still able to clear floors 9 and 10 with Beidou and Shangling as my second team. So let's go into how I build my Diluc, who should play the role as the main damage dealer. So the important part here, like I said, is my goal is I want to deal a lot of elemental damage. So maybe some of you don't know this yet, but elemental mastery is actually responsible for 
increasing the damage caused by overloaded superconduct, electrocharge, shattered and swirl. So if I trigger the elemental combo with dialogue, then I get a lot of bonus damage because I have elemental mastery. So because of that I picked a main weapon with elemental mastery on it. And then I went for a helmet who also has elemental mastery. You can see I have actually the 5 star equivalents of the gladiator set. But because they don't have elemental mastery I still picked this helmet over those ones because they have like attack and HP. So here I picked elemental mastery. And here of course I need of course also the damage shield needs attack, right? So I went for attack. More attack, more attack, and of course HP. For the set effect, I use the Berserker set for more crit rate in combination with more attack set from the Gladiators Finale. I could have used the whole set of the Gladiators Finale, but I think those 12% crit rate are way more important. However, I think if you're really, really end game, so we're talking about level 90, level 100, I think actually what will turn out the best um, set effects will be those ones. So the element specific sets, for example, for fire, for pyro, it would be this one, crimson, witch of flames, two piece set, Pyro damage plus 15%, 4 piece set effect increases overloaded and burning damage by 40%. And then using an elemental skill increases 2 piece set effect by 50% for 10 seconds. Maximum 3 stacks. Right? So we got 7.5% times 3. So you end up at 7 so you end up at 37.5 percent bonus damage on pyro 37.5% on pyro damage right and then those 40% on overloaded so i think this is the absolute end game set to go for i already have some pieces of them but not with the main stats that i want like i said i want elemental mastery here i don't want the crit damage on him right okay so this is how i built my dialogue. So let's talk now a little bit about the support character. Let's start by using Fischl and go into the details why I built her the way I did and then we will generalize this to be able to apply it to all support damage dealers. So my goal in this, this combination is I want to have dialogue with this high damage as much on the screen as possible without losing the overloaded effect, right? Basically, I just want to do this overload, this overload, this overload, and that's doing this all the time. So the goal is it, let's put this into perspective. So we put, we spawn the E-Raven. Yeah, then we go to dialogue, dealing damage until the Raven despawns. Then we go into Fischl, spawn the Raven again. Again, dialogue, overload damage, and more overload damage. And now, Fischl has the ISK ready again, right? However, after this rotation, E Raven, ultimate Raven, E Raven, now your ultimate is depleted, unless you build her with enough energy recharge, right? So in Apples and Domains, you have a lot of mobs, get a lot of energy recharge in general, but it's not enough. So I went and built her with an energy recharge weapon. And also I gave her a lot of artifacts with energy recharge on substats, right? So here we have, oh, let's start with the helmet, 5.2, 4.5, 10.4, 4.1 and here I wanted to have the crit. So this is how I built Fischl as a support character because her cooldown is so long, right? You gotta take this concept and apply it to the characters you want to build because 
the cooldowns are different, right? So that pretty much sums it up. What is, in my opinion, the most effective way to go about building teams. I hope I could help some of you. Thanks for watching. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.